So Simply E, just to remind you, is um, an app that was developed by the New York Public Library. Um, and it's also used by other libraries. So starting from the beginning, you're gonna go into your app store or your Play Store if you're on a, um, an Android phone and look up Simply E. All right, and what should pop up is this icon at the top. It looks like, it sort of looks like an E, like a book with an E on it. So you're gonna look for that. And then you should select that and you'll see um, this right here that says Simply E and then it says New York Public Library. So you wanna hit <clears throat> install and that'll install it on your phone. It'll take just a second as with any other app. And then once you've installed it, you should have a button that pops up and says open. This is on an Android phone, um, but it'll be very similar on a um, Apple phone. Okay, and then once you open it, you'll get this little sort of loading window that says simply E. Once it loads, the first time you open it, you'll get this user end agreement that's basically just saying that you agree to um, the, you know, the stipulations of the app, um, which is basically that you're, you know, using this content for your own use, et cetera, et cetera. Go ahead and click agree. And then you're going to say, find your library. All right. So click on that, find your library. And you should be able to see if you're in New York and your location's on um, NYPL, New York Public Library will pop up pretty quickly. Otherwise, you can just sort of scroll down until you see it. It's, you can see it on here. It's right um, fourth one down. So you're just going to select that. And once you've selected that, here you are. You're in the New York Public Library. If you've never opened this before, what you're doing right now is you can browse books. Okay. You're going to go to your accounts. And you're going to say New York Public Library. And the thing you'll see that these two here, the New York Public Library is the one you're sort of aiming for here. If you are not in New York, if you don't want to get a library card if for any reason, I don't know, you just see you um, want to just sort of browse through this without a library card, you can always use the Simply E collection and you don't need a library card for that. So the Simply E collection is things that are like sort of open source or more open source, like more. Um, it's like maybe older books that don't have um, uh, that are public domain. Um, there's some books. It, it's, it's a limited selection of books, but it's still, you know, books that you can browse and look at. And you don't need anything to look at that. You don't need a library card. The New York Public Library, you'll find, has way, way more selection. Um, so it's, you know, it's to your advantage to look at that. But you can always look at the Simply E collection as well. You would click on New York Public Library. All right, and then this is where, if you have a card already, you're gonna enter it in, okay? So don't make a new card if you already have one that you know the, the um, barcode and the passcode to. If you don't know, or if it's been like three years, go ahead and create a new card, that's fine. Um, if you really don't know your PIN number, you can create a new card. Okay, so let's say we click on that create a new card right here where it says don't have a library card. All right, and then you will say, that you're 13 or older and that you agree to the terms. And once you've done this, so this is the thing that Christina really helped me out with. So I was thinking that there was maybe another way you could just verify your address. You actually have to literally be in New York City. Like you turn your location on just to check this out. You can turn it right back off, <clears throat> but your phone will detect whether you're in New York City in order for you to get a card. So Christina was in New Jersey when she tried to get a card and she was denied. And again, you don't have to leave your location on after you do this. And it's not gonna check your location every time you sign on. It's just to get your library card. They just wanna make sure that people who are getting New York Public Library cards actually are um, located in New York. But then if you travel after this, you can still get books and downloads. It's just for this one time to when you get the card itself. So it's gonna check your location and then it'll have you enter your um, name, your username and then your passcode. So just make sure you write, once it gives you your barcode and your passcode, make sure you write that down somewhere. Take a screenshot of it maybe, that's what I did. Um, just so you know, it should save it for when you log in next time, but if you ever need to use it, um, or it's, you know, for some reason it's not in there, you need to have that. Um, so just make sure you have that written down somewhere. 
So that's how you get in there. And once you have that, you are free to check stuff out um, immediately. You don't have to wait for anything else. Your, your, um, your library card will be ready. We're going to search in the app itself. Okay, and then we're going to look at how you sort of navigate it once you've downloaded an ebook or an audiobook. So this is the home page of the Simply eApp. So this gives you recommendations. The selection is by no means limited to what you see on this front page. So, um, you know, I might look at this and say, oh, I really want to read these things that are part of the New York Public Library book club. But, you know, go in there and search. Look for whatever you want to look for. So you're going to click on the um, search button, the one that looks like a little magnifying glass. So I'm going to go in there and I'm going to type out the phone box search. Assume it is. All right. So we see here that there are two options for this. OK, so what you have is the one here that says the Bone Clocks, David Mitchell ebook. All right. And you're going to say if you want to get the ebook, so that's the printed book um, that you'll get on your phone, um, then you would just say get. OK, the other one down here, you see the little headphone icon. That's an audio book. So if you wanted to listen to the book, you would do that. And you see here it says reserve. And what that means is for the ebook, you can go ahead and get it right now. It doesn't have holds on it um, like there's enough copies of it that you have access to it immediately. For reserve, what that means is that um, you have to wait, it'll put you on sort of the wait list to get it. So I'll tell you how long it'll take you to get it. So I'll show you how to do both of those things. So, okay, let's say you just want to get the ebook. So we're going to go ahead and say get. So you see what's happening now is that the book is downloading. And then you're going to hit read. So, ta da, we have it. Okay. That is now going to be saved in down here where it says books. So you have catalog and then books. If you go into your books, there it will be. OK, so you can go in, you can read it. I do want to show you how to navigate these a little bit. So um, if you go up into the corner where there are those three dots, what that does is helps you to go through the book. So especially if you're reading something that has like separate stories in it or something like that, you want to skip ahead. And um, this is a real quick and easy way to get to, let's say we want to go to chapter seven. You know, any of these things we want to go to the, like you could scroll all the way down and get to about the author. Okay, so that's just like as if you were flipping through a book. Um, this one, when you go over this one that looks like a little sort of banner, what that is is a bookmark. Okay, so let's say we want to bookmark for some reason, we want to bookmark this about the author page. So I just did that. It doesn't seem like anything really happened, but let me show you what happened. You're going to click again on those, the one next to it, that's the dot. If you click on that, you'll see there's a little tab here that says bookmarks. If I click on bookmarks, you'll see that my bookmark is right here. So if I want to go back to that, I'm going to click on that, it'll take me to the about the author again. So, you know, if you're if there's a certain spot, like generally speaking, if you open a book that you've been reading, you'll be in the same place that you were when you stopped. Um, but if you want to just make sure if there's a page or a certain story or something that you really like, just throw a bookmark on there and then you can navigate back to it really easily. All right, and then I want to show you this one more thing is that gear right there, which we've kind of learned that gears tend to be sort of settings or um, preferences, stuff like that. This is interesting. This can be really helpful. OK, so one thing that is really kind of fantastic about ebooks is that you can adjust um, the brightness, you can adjust the font that can be really helpful just for readability um, for, um, you know, whatever works best for you. Um, so there's a couple of different fonts you can choose from. So you see, as we do this, if you look at the text and not the place where it says about the author, let me get out of here real quick. This will change the font for you to make it, you know, maybe it's more legible for you when the font looks like that. Or maybe it's more legible for you when the font looks like um, something more like this. So you can just play around with that and see what works best for you. And the font, again, is just the way the, the letters and words look. Um, and you've seen that if you open different books, you'll see that the letters are sort of formatted a little differently. One thing that's really um, good to know, and I'm not sure how 
helpful this is, but I've heard that this is very helpful. This one in the top right hand corner that looks kind of funny, like it's got little shadows on it. Let me put it on that real quick. Um, so what that is, is um, it's a font that's supposed to make things a bit easier to read if you're dyslexic. Um, so if, if that's something helpful for you, I encourage you to try that and just see if it works for you. So I'm gonna show you how to reserve this audiobook too. We did this last time, but I just wanna show you one more time. So, okay, so like the library, the, you know, like the physical library, the library has to pay for copies of eBooks that they then lend out to you. That's why eBooks are not generally sort of like unlimited. Um, you still have to reserve things that are really popular. So we're gonna reserve this audiobook. It's gonna do that. We're gonna go to the one that says hold because it's gonna be on reserve. So look, we've got three holds in here. Those were just things I did earlier. If we click on this one, it says you'll be able to borrow it in 47 days. So it might be kind of popular. It might take a little while. Generally speaking, if you want something now, just poke around until you find something. But if there's something really particular that you want to read or you want to get an audiobook for, um, you can set up this, this um, reservation. It'll tell you, you don't have to sit there and check it. It'll tell you, it'll give you a notification when 47 days are up or however much it is. Um, and generally, you get most books for um, either two weeks or 20 days. And then you can check them out again. Um, if they're not on hold, um, you just go in and check them out again. The perennial favorite, Good Night Moon, so children's book, Good Night Moon. I checked it out already. I'm gonna hit download. I just wanna show you what this looks like on the phone and then what your sort of alternatives are for this. So Good Night Moon is one of those big picture books that you'd read to a kid. And it's really helpful to have, you know, kids books available on here, but, the thing that happens with this is they haven't made it so you can turn um, books horizontally on the phone. So you get this weird thing that's just a cut out part of the image. It really doesn't work very well. That's kind of like a thing that they need to fix along the way. Um, so I know not everybody has a tablet, but I just want to show you what this looks like on a tablet because it's so much better and it's so much cooler. I have the same book on here, which has been sort of Again, the tablets have been formatted so that um, children's books look right on here. So look, so this, you can do a little read along here. This is Good Night Moon on the tablet. So these are actually really cool. Like these children's books are really cool when you can get them to work on the tablet. So you have full color pictures. Um, so that's like, you know, it's it's a pain that it doesn't work on the phone, but it works really wonderfully on a tablet. Um, so that's that's a good thing to know if you are um, trying to access books for um, kids or just books. You know, it might be a graphic novel or something. It doesn't have to be a kid's book, just something that is like heavy on images. It's it's um, it's not going to work well on your phone. It will work well on a tablet. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, one thing that you can do, though, if you are. Um, if you're trying to get access to children's books, um, maybe that aren't as heavy on pictures or something like that, you can always do audio books for those too. If you're, if like you have a child that likes being read to, the only thing is you won't have um, the physical words in front of you. So really a tablet is kind of the way to go with like really visual heavy books. But if you're reading just like, you know, all text chapter book, the eBooks are fine on your phone. This is Good Night Moon. So you see it's full color. It's, you know, sort of easy to navigate. You, know, you can imagine your little read along here. Okay, 